great welcome to this particular session. So after having completed till up to 1.9, now we are going to pick up question number 1.10. This question is from past examination, but a very interesting question. No doubt about this. Let's have a look over it. A company with head office, it is written that uh, in City X has a branch at City Z and the branch receives all goods from head office who remits cash for all expenses and total sales by the branch for the year ended 31st of 3 2022 amounted to in fact 6 lakh 50 thousand total sales are 650 out of a 75 percent is on credit other details are given to you opening stock at branch closing stock opening data closing data petty cash in the beginning petty cash further sent by head office and petty cash is spent that been out of total available petty cash branch manager has spent this much further just to confuse you this time it is written this way expenses actually spent by branch now whatever is whatever branch expenses are there for that head office will always send cash so that is the reason here you are going to write to cash and all sales made by the branch at cost plus 25 percent similar to the last question even in this question it is written that branch after having received the goods sells them at a margin of 25 percent on cost we are supposed to prepare branch account so here we go and we prepare branch account correct branch account this is question number 1.10 Besides branch account, we are supposed to prepare branch data's account, branch data's account. Correct. If you want me to, I will stress the lines also. Yes. And So now the first point which is given to us is that total sales which is written in the prefacing lines 6,50,000 out of a 75% is on credit, correct? So here towards the credit side of the branch account, first of all we shall write by remittances. And under the remittances, I am going to write cash sales and given to us cash sales 25% because 75% is credit sales. So 25% of 6,50,000 I will compute. And it will be equal to how much? It will be equal to 6,50,000 into 25%, 1,62,500. So cash sales is 1,62,500. After writing cash sales in the branch data data's account, we shall write here to credit sales two credit sales total sales is equal to 650 and out of that we know 75 percent is credit sales correct so 75 percent if i am going to compute it will be equal to 650 into 75 percent 487 500 so 487 500 so this is how you are going to put up this figure and then opening stock needless to tell you where it will come opening stock opening stock is 4000 then closing stock is given balance carried down closing stock 30000 Closing stock is 30,000. Besides that, opening daters are given. So, opening daters I will write here first. Opening daters. Opening daters given to us as 45,000. Since we are preparing daters account, I will also write opening balance brought down here 45,000. Very next item is closing daters. So under balance carried down, I will write here closing daters. 
amount of closing debtors given to you is 30,000. And since we are preparing debtors account also, we shall also write here balance carried down 30,000. Correct? Then we have been given petty cash in the beginning. Petty cash, opening petty cash. Opening petty cash balance is just about 250. Further, it is given head office has sent further petty cash of rupees 3000. So you will write here two cash. Petty cash sent. That is 3000. After that, it is given to you petty cash is spent. So when you will write the closing balance of petty cash, you had in the beginning 250, correct? 3000 further sent. So total petty cash now available is 3250, out of which 2500 has been spent. So 3250 minus 2500 will give you 750. So this is the closing balance. Then we have been given expenses actually met by branch. Remember one thing it is given this way around, but you need to understand that for branch expenses, head office will always send cash. So two cash, branch expenses. That is actually 2000, that is 45,000. 45,000. Now, in this question, if you have noticed, very important item is not given and that happens to be good sent to branch. Correct? We have done, we have incorporated all the information, but we haven't come across good sent to branch. So, unless and until we shall have good sent to branch account, that I will write with red pen just to attract your attention. So, unless and until I will have good sent to branch account, I cannot find out by profit. So, since it is not given, goods sent to branch. Since it is not given, I will have to find it out by way of notes. So, in the notes, what I will do now? First of all, you do the working. We have to find out cost of goods sold or simply goods sent to branch, correct? So how we will find goods sent to branch? See here, in this question, we have been given that you know, total sales is equal to 6,50,000. Total sales is equal to 6,50,000. Total sales is equal to 6,50,000. And we have been given that branch is selling these goods at some profit margin. If I will subtract the profit margin, what will be the profit margin? See here, pay attention. It is written that in the question, last line, all sales are made by the branch at cost plus 25%. You have to pay attention whether the rate of profit is given on cost or on sales. It could have been given this way around that all sales are made by the branch at 25% profit on sales. It could have been given that way, but this time it is given 25% on cost. So we call it that rate of profit is on cost. If rate of profit is on cost, always presume cost to be 100. If rate of profit is on sales, always presumes sales as 100. Correct? So, rate of profit on cost is 100. I will presume cost as 100. And profit is 25. So, that means, if cost is 100, branch is selling it at a profit of 25. That means selling price is 125. After having filled all these items, now you compute rate of profit on sales. In order to compute rate of profit on sales, we write in the numerator profit 
and in the denominator I will write selling price. It will give me rate of profit on sales. Rate of profit on sales is 1 by 5. What does it mean? It means if sales are rupees worth 5, then included in it 1 rupee profit. Correct? So we can find out that in the sales of 650, how much is the profit margin? I just told you 5 by 1, what does it show? It shows that if sales is equal to 5, then profit is 1. This is the what we call replication of 1 by 5. And if sales is equal to 650, what is the profit margin? So 650,000 into 1 by 5. So now you can find out the profit. 6,50,000 divided by 5, that is 1,30,000. That means, out of 6,50,000, in the sales of 6,50,000, profit is 1,30,000. So, by subtracting 130 from 650, what I get? By subtracting 130 from 650, I get 5,20,000. What does this 5,20,000 shows? This 5,20,000 shows cost of the goods sold, cost of goods sold, cost of goods sold, cost of goods sold, try to understand this point. What does cost of goods sold means? Cost of goods sold means out of total available goods with you, out of total available goods with you, you sold out these many goods. Are you getting my point or not? For example, see here, you had in the beginning opening stock at cost 4000. You are the branch manager, let us say. Your branch is already having opening stock of 4000. Quite obviously, we shall also send you, we means the head office. Quite obviously, head office will supply you some goods during the current year, which we do not know and which we are interested in finding out. Head office quite obviously will send you some goods in the current year. We do not know this figure at this moment. But, supposing you receive some goods, so that means total available goods with you is equal to this much. Total available goods with branch Total available goods. So, total available goods is this much. And out of this much, you have sold out this much of goods. So, less cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold. You had goods costing this much with you. Out of that, you sold out this much of goods. So, quite obviously, Quite obviously, whatever you are left up with, that is nothing but closing stock. You are getting my point or not? Now, closing stock is given in the question. Closing stock is 30,000. Now, closing stock is 30,000. Correct? Now, if this figure is 520 and this figure is 30, what will be this figure? This figure must be 550,000. Because from 550, if you will subtract 520, then only you get, get 30,000. Are you getting my point or not? So, you have got total available goods. And you had in the beginning 4,000. And total available goods is 550. So, that means 546,000 worth of goods must have been sent to you by the head office during the year. Is it clear to you or not? So, head office must have sent... 5,46,000 worth of goods. You had for 4,000 in the beginning. We must have sent you this much of goods in the current year. That is why total available goods is 550. And out of that, you sold out goods costing 520. That is why closing stock is 30,000. Is it clear to you? So we have found out 5,46,000. This is the figure which we are interested in finding out in this question. So goods sent to branch account is 5,46,000. 5,46,000, correct? Now, 
in order to compute the profit we have to make sure that we have all the figures related to data so opening data are there closing data are there but cash receipt from data is not there so we can find out cash receipt from data by balancing the data account if i will balance the data account then cash receipt from data will be equal to cash from data will be equal to 502500 5,2,500 and this 502500 you can write here 502500 cash receipt from data cash from data 5,2,500 and then you will tell you this and you can get your profit is it clear to you or not so your net profit will be equal to 82500 but you must check you must do a check so this is how you are going to compute net profit is it clear to you or not so after having completed till up to first 10 questions now we are moving over to a very important aspect and very interesting aspect and if you are able to get over this particular aspect which i am going to do now that mean half the battle is already won of course war is still remains to be but it means majority of the chapter is almost done correct I will keep this shit over there. Now we are going to take the concept of invoicing. What is this invoicing? What is this invoicing? Invoicing. If you will break these word, invoicing. Invoicing means in a very slow voice, and you use slow pitch. of your voice only when you want to hide something so invoicing means we are hiding something and what we are hiding whenever i will say we you connote it with the head office correct due to some or other reason it is seen that head office is not interested in letting the branch know what amount of profit they are earning are you getting my point or not in fact in order to be a very successful successful business the first rule is that don't let the profit know even to your soul don't let it know are you getting my point or not so general policy it is seen among the corporate houses that they do not want to reveal their profit to the branches quite obviously out of fear that if branch would come to know that this much of profit is there so it could be a possibility that branch might start their business independently and we do not want any competitors so that is the reason actually why we are not interested in in what we call letting our profits known or getting revealed to the branches so that is the reason in order to hide our profit from branches we take the help of concept of invoicing now what is invoicing and how head office is able to hide what we call their profits from branches see here presume that cost price of the goods is cost price of the goods cost price of the goods sent to branch is 1 lakh okay i will write 5 lakh cost price of the goods is let us say 5 so let us say in the current year head office dispensed some goods and the cost price of those goods is 5 lakh so head office what it did it put the goods in a box now this is the box correct in this box goods costing 5 lakh have been put but what head office did further 
they put up a paper slip outside this box. A paper slip is put outside this particular box. And it is the general policy. Generally, we put a paper slip and that paper slip is known as invoice. And generally in the invoice, it is written how much quantity and at what price we are sending it to you. So when head office put up the paper slip outside this particular box, they wrote that cost price if cost price of these goods is actually 6 lakhs. Are you getting my point or not? Intentionally, head office wrote that invoice price of the goods is 6 lakh. Actually, their cost price is 5 lakh. In accounting language, I will call it this way. Cost price is 5 lakh. But head office sent these goods at an invoice price of 6 lakhs. That means head office intentionally inflated the price of these goods by 1 lakh. And the amount or the margin by which the cost price is increased, which in this case happens to be 1 lakh, is known as loading or margin. It is known as loading or margin. It is known as loading or margin. Is it clear to you or not? Even though we use the word loading, but actually it is load. Correct? Anyway, so the cost price in reality is 5 lakh. But we inflated it intentionally by 1 lakh. It is known as loading. And now the invoice price is 6 lakhs. Now branch will receive these goods or of course this box. Correct? Now when branch will receive these goods. So branch will think that price of the goods is 6 lakhs. Although branch manager is not a fool. He is not a naive person. Correct? Even he is an intelligent person. He knows actually that the real cost is not 6 lakh. But only thing is that he will grow in the dark and he will not be able to assess what exactly is the correct cost price. So, branch manager will receive these goods and he will think that, okay, the price of these goods is equal to 6 lakhs. Correct? Actually, Many a people sometimes actually do not understand the concept of invoicing so correctly. Now if I am going to ask you a question, before I ask the question, let me repeat and recapitulate. Cost price of the goods is 5 lakh, head office inflated it by 1 lakh and send the goods at rupees 6 lakh. Obviously branch will receive this 6 lakh worth of goods, correct? Now you tell me, will the branch manager will sell the goods at a price higher than this or not? Higher price, most of us think so, but no. Under the concept of invoicing, head office simply wants branch to sell the goods at this price only or at a price which is written in the invoice. Are you getting my point or not? So practically speaking, of course, this is invoice price. We know that this is invoice price. This is the price written on the invoice. So logically, branch manager will sell these goods at this price only. Indirectly, we reach the conclusion that selling price and invoice price are one and same thing. Is it clear to you or not? Head office will not ask the branch manager to sell their goods at a price higher than this. Whatever price is given to you, you please sell these goods at this particular price. That is the basic idea. But the important point here is that branch will not know the correct cost price of the goods. So they will grow in the dark and as such branch will never ever be able to get what we call get to know the real profit earned by the head office. Now presuming further, please pay attention. Presuming further, When 5 lakh worth of goods, in fact goods costing 5 lakh were sent at an invoice price of 6 lakh, what entry I am going to write in the branch account? Of course I will write goods sent to branch account but at what price? I will have to write here at 6 lakhs. At invoice price only. Sir, why? The reason being is that our invoice is being made at 6 lakh. So that is the reason we will have to put up the invoice price. Correct? 
we further presume that Brahm sold all these goods. We for, further presume that Brahm sold all these goods. And because Branch was expected to sell the goods at 6 lakh, that means Branch sold these goods for rupees 6 lakhs. Presuming that Branch has sold all these goods for rupees 6 lakhs. Because when we send the goods costing 5 lakh at an invoice price of 6 lakh, we are simply asking the Branch to sell the goods at this price only. And I am telling you all the goods have been sold. So quite obviously sales will be 6 lakhs only. Now, and we presume these are cash sales. So logically in this case, if I am going to ask you, what is the profit? Sir, actually there is no profit. Here you have written 6 lakh and here we have written 6 lakhs. But this is the problem. So, under invoicing, in order to arrive at over the correct profit, the figure of invoice will have to be brought down to cost price. This figure we know is at invoice price, correct? This figure is at cost. This figure need to be brought down to cost price. In order to bring this figure to the cost price, what we do, we simply write on the opposite side, goods sent to branch, loading, and we know that loading in it is 1 lakh. Because loading means the difference between the cost price and the invoice price. We know that the loading is actually 1 lakh. So when I will put the loading on the opposite side, that means I am bringing this item to the cost price. You cannot directly write 5 lakh. Is it clear to you or not? So now, we know that actually we sent goods costing 5 lakh and those goods have been sold for 6 lakh. So profit is 1 lakh and that is the amount of profit which we are getting now. Is it clear to you or not? I hope under the concept of invoice, you got a bit of idea that how the profit is computed. So basically you need to understand that why invoicing is done to hide our profits. Why we do, do not want branches to know our profit. Simple reason is that we always nurse a fear that it could be a possibility that suddenly a branch would find that there is such a high amount of profit in this line of trade. It is better to actually open our own business rather than working as a branch. So that is the reason we don't want the branches to know our profit. In order to hide the profit, generally goods which goods are loaded with a higher price. For example, in this case, cost price of the goods is 5. We inflated it by 1 and the amount by which we inflate is known as loading or margin. And cost plus margin or loading is known as invoice price. But very, very important, branch manager is not asked to sell the goods at a price higher than the invoice price rather they are simply expected to sell the goods at invoice price this is very important is it clear to you or not second important point is that loading could be only on goods loading cannot be on anything else loading could be only on goods it cannot be on sales is it clear to you or not Loading could be only on goods. For example, loading could be on opening stock, on closing stock, on goods sent to branch account, on goods sent to branch returns, on goods in transit, and later on we will see the cases of goods transfer. So loading could be possible only on goods. That means in the question, we, we shall have to pull out the loading from opening stock, closing stock, goods sent to branch. When I said pull out the loading, that means, for example, in this case, when I did, uh, when I wrote here goods sent to branch loading, that means I am pulling out the loading factor. Is it clear to you or not? So, loading all those items which are at loaded figures need to be pulled back to their original cost. In order to pull them back to their what we call original cost, we have to write the loading amount on the opposite side. So, loading is possible only on goods. Is it clear to you or not? Very important point also. Loading is not possible on sales return. Sales return means goods returned by, goods returned by, returned by, Taters to branch. Taters to branch. Even these are goods, but loading is not done with respect to sales return. Why? Reason is there. 
So very important concept. Once again, I will take you back. Head office, branch office and customers or daters. Loading is possible only such goods which are commuting between what we call head office and branch office. Loading is always done on goods, no doubt about that. But loading is done only on such goods which are commuting to and fro between what we call head office and branch or branch office. If any good is commuting between branch and daters, in such cases, loading is not possible. The reason is very simple because neither daters nor branch knows the correct cost. That is why loading is not possible. And that is the reason why loading of sales return is not done. Is it clear to you or not? So loading is done only with respect to what we call goods. So this is all about loading, but still in order to make it clear, let me pick up one question to make you thoroughly strong in this particular topic. We pick up 1.11. And from here on, questions of invoicing are there. But it will not be given in this manner as I gave you that goods costing 5 lakh, their invoice price is 6 lakh. Generally, questions on loading will carry such lines. Pay attention. Invoicing. A head office at Jaipur has a branch at Kolkata. To which goods are invoiced by the head office at cost plus 25%. This question belongs to invoice category because here it is written goods are sent at some margin. So you might be tempted to think, sir, why not previous question was invoicing? Because in those questions, we were not sending the goods at a margin. It is very important. Goods must be sent at some margin. So here head office is sending the goods to its Kolkata branch and you have to pay attention towards the margin. For example, in this case, it is written margin is cost plus 25%. I have been telling you this margin could be possible on sales or on cost. Whenever I will say sales, presume sales and invoice price as one and same thing. So rate of margin will be given to you either on sales or what we call on cost. Either it will be given on cost or it will be given on invoice price or sales price. Further, it is given all cash received by the branch is daily remitted to the head office all expenses are paid from Jaipur and from the from the following particular show how the branch account will appear in the head office box and items have been given to you now before we attempt this question let me draw the formations first 1.11 question number 1.11 then I will write here branch account. And I will stress the line. So, I think this much is space this time I will require. And then I will also write here branch daters account. Branch daters account. Once you have done this way, now you start the question. Even though this question is of invoice category, first I will do the question as if I am doing a normal question, correct? Just to make you understand better. For example, here it is written a stock on January 1st at invoice price. So I am not caring about invoice price at this particular moment, correct? First we are solving this question as we are solving it in a normal manner. So what I do, I will write the opening balance here. Now opening balance, opening balance of a stock. Of course it is written at invoice price, but I am not caring about that. So 12,000 simply. Then it is written petty cash in hand. Petty cash in hand, 3,000. Then it is written daters in the beginning and daters in the beginning are worth rupees 30,000. So I will write simply daters 30,000. Is it clear to you? Because we are preparing daters account, so daters opening balance will also find place over here 30,000. 
then it is written goods invoiced from Jaipur. Goods invoiced from Jaipur means head office which is in Jaipur has supplied goods to the branch at an invoice price. But as I told you, we are simply considering this as goods sent to branch account. Of course, these goods have been set in invoice price, but at this moment, we are not caring about invoice price, correct? So, 80,000. Then it is written cash sales, so remittances. Under the remittances, you write cash sales. Amount of cash sales is 35,000. So 35,000 you write here. Then you have been given credit sales, but credit sales will find place only in debtors account. So we shall write it over here. Credit sales. Credit sales. Credit sales is equal to how much? Credit sales is 52,000. So I will write here 52. Then it is given goods returned by debtors. Very, very important. Don't get confused. There are two types of return I have been telling. One is known as goods returned by branch. Goods returned by branch will be written always in the branch account. Whereas goods returned by debtors is known as sales return. And it will always be written in the debtors account. Because this is a transaction between branch and debtors. Sales return. That is goods returned by debtors. Goods returned by debtors. goods returned by debtors is equal to 3000 then you have been given discount allowed to debtors in the previous sessions i have already told you discount is a transaction which is taking place between branch and debtors so discount allowed will find place only in debtors account that is 300 then we have checks received from Jaipur Jaipur is the head office head office has sent some checks to bank these checks are meant for payment of wages and salaries wages and salaries 11,000 for rent, one thousand rent four thousand, and pay attention. This this line is also very important. Head office has sent check for office furniture. That means branch might have needed some furniture. So head office sent one thousand five hundred to buy the furniture. Now, what will be the impact of this? The impact of this will be when later on I am going to write the closing balances. Later on, when I am going to write the closing balances. In the closing balance, I will write office furniture also. Why I will write office furniture? Quite obviously, because branch has purchased this year a office furniture. So at the end of the year, they will have office furniture worth rupees 1,500 unless there is some depreciation in it. So it will also appear later on in the what we call uh, closing balance. Is it clear to you or not? Then it is written checks remitted by head office for petty expenses to bank. Uh, petty or petty expenses so we have given further cash uh, that is 4000 4000 so when I will write the closing balance of petty cash see here I had in the beginning 3000 head office sent 4000 more petty cash correct total petty cash now available with the branch happens to be 7000 and in the very next line it is written branch managers expenses and in bracket it is also given amount is spent by branch manager out of petty cash 
So out of 7,000, branch manager has spent 6,900. So quite obviously, now we are left off with 100 worth of petty cash. Correct? Then balance of stock is given. Balance of stock. Balance of stock is how much? Balance of stock is 20,000. Balance of stock is 20,000. And then balance of debtors is also given 27,000. Balance of debtors is 27,000. I will write 27,000. Anything else is given? No, sir. Debtors, closing balance, I will also write here closing debtors. 27,000. Is it clear to you? Suppose if this would have been a normal question, then I would have gone for the telling of net profit. And I have been telling not right from the beginning now that before we tell you this account, we need to be very sure that we have all the information with respect to daters. Opening and closing balance are there, but cash receipt from daters is not there. So I will have to tell you this account to get the figure of daters. And if I will tell you, I will get by cash 51,700 by cash from daters. By cash from daters, this will be my balancing figure, and that will be equal to 51,700. 51,700. Is mm -hmm. it clear to you? And this 51,700, I will also write it over here cash from daters. Cash from daters. 51,700. Now, if this would have been a normal question, that means if this question would not have belonged to invoicing category, I could have had computed my profit. But problem is that this question belongs to invoicing category. So now I will explain the exit formations for invoice. See here. Just a moment ago, I told you whenever question is of invoicing, the problem arises with respect to goods. For example, in this case, for example, in this case, this is opening stock. It is given in the question that it is at invoice price. Even goods sent to branch, it is also given at invoice price. And goods sent to and, close, and closing stock, it is also at invoice price. Correct? Very important, if the question is of invoice price, the question is, question becomes of invoice price whenever it will be written in the question that goods are sent at so and so profit margin on cost or invoice price. Whether the margin is at cost or invoice price, it means the question is of invoice price. What we mean by invoicing questions, that means here goods are being sent at a profit margin. The profit margin could be on cost or could be on invoice price. That's a different matter. But this is a question of invoice price. In the invoice price question, please pay attention. In the invoice price question, suppose here, if it would have been written opening stock only. For example, here it is written at invoice price. Now, suppose in this question, if it would have been written as opening stock only. Even in that case, I would have had presumed that this stock is at invoice price. You got my point or not? In invoicing questions, you will always presume that goods opening stock, closing stock, goods sent to branch, goods returned to branch, goods in transit, goods transferred. These items are at invoice price irrespective of the fact whether invoice price is written or not. Under invoicing question, goods opening stock, closing stock, goods sent to branch, return, etc. shall always be presumed to be at invoice price. And if these goods are at invoice price, you know what I said earlier, that these goods need to be brought to their cost price in order to find out the correct profit. This is the problem. Now, how to bring these goods to their cost price? We need to find out rate of loading. How to find rate of loading? This is the next part. See here. You need to always pay attention whether the rate of profit is given on cost or on 
invoice price. Now you let me know in this question. Now you let me know. In this question, rate of margin, rate of margin. When I say rate of margin, it means rate of loading. Rate of margin is on cost or on invoice price? Sir, it is on cost. How did you find out? Sir, it is written, goods are invoiced by the head office at cost plus 25 percent, right? Because it is written, goods are sent at cost plus 25 percent, we will call it rate of profit is given or rate of loading is given on cost, correct? If rate of loading is given on cost, presume cost price to be 100. Because why I am presuming cost price is 100 because rate of loading is on cost. Then I will write here margin. Margin means loading. Margin is 25. So that means invoice price is equal to 125. So invoice price will be 125. Now you let me know. Suppose if this rate of margin would have been written this way, 25% on invoice price. Suppose in this question, if it would have been written that goods are sent at a margin or loading of 25% on invoice price, how you would have developed this equation? First write cost price plus margin is equal to invoice price. Correct? This time rate is based upon invoice price. Here rate is based on cost. Here it is based on invoice price. If rate is based on invoice price, take invoice price as 100. 25% of 100 will be 25, so cost will become 75. Correct? It is very important, first of all, you for you to frame this. Once you will become proficient in it, now suppose I say, now you tell me please, suppose I say goods are sent at 25% on okay 30 percent on cost price how will you make the equation sir cost plus margin is equal to invoice price rate is based on cost price so we'll presume cost price as 100 and margin will be 30 and invoice price will be 200 good suppose if i say goods are sent goods are sent at 40 percent on invoice price how will you frame the equation? Cost plus margin is equal to invoice price. Because this time rate is based on invoice price, so invoice price will be considered as 100 and margin will be 40 and cost will be 60. It is very important, first of all, you need to become deft in framing the equation. Is it clear to you? I hope now you got an idea regarding that. So in this question, rate of margin is on cost. So we need to frame this equation. Once we have framed this equation, all we need to do is to write the margin in the numerator and in the denominator, you write invoice price. After having framed this equation, all you need to do is to put a margin in the numerator and in the denominator, you write invoice price. This is known as rate of loading on invoice price. This is known as rate of loading on invoice price. That means even though you were given rate of loading on cost price, you converted it to into now rate of loading on invoice price. It means if 5 rupees is the invoice price, if 5 rupees is the invoice price, the loading is 1 and cost price is 4. That is one what we mean by what we call a uh, rate of loading. Is it clear to you? For example, in this case, if I want to extract the loading of opening stock, we know that 5 is the invoice price, loading is 1. And if invoice price of opening stock is 12,000, what is the amount of loading? That is 12,000 into 1 by 5. That is equal to 2,400. So you got my idea or not? So point here is that, in order to pull out the loading, we need to frame or we need to find out rate of loading on invoice price. We need to find out rate of loading on invoice price. We might be given rate in the question either on cost or on invoice price. But 
ultimately we have to find rate of loading on invoice price this is the crux of this particular chapter or this topic so in this question in the working now i will move over to the working in the working i will write rate is given as 25 percent on cost isn't it that means rate of profit or rate of loading is given on cost so we will frame the equation cost price plus loading or margin whatever you may like to write is equal to invoice price correct because rate is given on cost i will presume cost price as 100 i will keep the margin at 25 and invoice price is 125 now i have the margin and invoice price so i can find rate of loading on invoice price 25 by 125 this is known as rate of loading on invoice price now in order to extract the loading all i need to do is to just <coughs> multiply the figure of invoice with this one by five i also told you loading is possible only loading is possible only on goods but only on such goods loading is possible on goods but only such goods which travel between head office to branch or from branch to head office is it clear to you generally loading is done on opening stock closing stock goods sent to branch goods sent to branch returns goods in transit and goods transferred generally loading is done on such goods because these goods commute between head office and branch office and just to remind you once again loading is never ever done on sales return because this is a transaction between branch office and data so here we are not going to do any loading for example sales return because neither data nor branch are aware of the real cost so they cannot what we call find out the loading is it clear to you or not two three important point i told you first of all you need to know how the question belongs to invoicing category for that it will it is very simple you will be given that goods are sent at so and so margin either on cost or on invoice price it could be either on cost or invoice price irrespective of that the question now belongs to invoice category if the question belongs to invoice category the items with respect to goods which are given in the question you shall always presume them to be at invoice price whether word invoice price is written or not is it clear to you and then after framing the rate of loading on invoice price now all you need to do is to bring them to their cost price so i have found out the rate of loading on invoice price now i now what i need to do here i have written opening stock on the opposite side i will write loading on opening stock loading on opening stock So 12,000 into 1 by 5, that's all. So when I will write here 2,400, that means this item which was at invoice price has been converted back to the cost price. 12,000 minus 2,400 is 9,600. Similarly, goods which we sent are at invoice price. So I will write on the opposite side, loading on goods sent to branch account. 80,000 into 1 by 5. 80,000 into 1 by 5 is equal to 16,000. Is it clear to you? Similarly, now we will do the loading of closing stock. Because closing stock is written towards the credit side, now I will move over to the debit side and write loading on closing stock. Loading on closing stock. Now, closing stock you have been given as 20,000. You will multiply it with 1 by 5. 
and you will get 4000. So now you have completed this question. Is it clear to you or not? All we need to do is to find out the profit which we can very easily. Your net profit will be 11,100. You should check it. Correct? So this is all about invoicing. Is it clear to you or not? Interesting? Very interesting, sir. Okay, if it is interesting, I am very sure you all are interested in doing one more question. 1.12 now we are picking up. Actually, the question starts from the next sheet. Question starts from the next sheet. Here it is written, K55 Limited has a branch at City F. And goods are invoiced to the branch at 20% profit on sales. Suppose if I ask you, in this case, it is written, goods are sent. Isn't it or not? A55 Limited has a branch at City F and goods are invoiced to, goods are invoiced means goods are sent to the branch at an invoice price of 20% profit on sales. So how will you find the rate? Question number 1.12. See here in this case, first of all rate is given, rate given. Twenty percent on sales. Now twenty percent on sales means twenty percent on invoice price. I told you under the concept of invoice price, sale price and invoice price will be one and same. Correct? So you presume that rate is given to you as twenty percent on invoice price. Now because rate is given on invoice price, when I will frame the equation cost plus margin. is equal to invoice price. Now you tell me, should I presume cost as 100 or invoice price as 100? I will presume invoice price as 100 because rate is given on invoice price. Margin is 20 and cost is 80. Once I have filled up this, all I need to do is to find out margin and I need to divide it by invoice price and I will get the rate of loading on invoice price once again as 1 by 5. So my rate of loading is 1 by 5. Is it clear to you or not? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Now suppose in this question, question number, that is 1.12. Question number 1.12. And now I will stress the lines. Here it is. You want to do this question? I am getting some messages. Okay, you try to do it off your own first and then in the next session I will do it. First you try to do it off your own. Okay, in the next session I will do it for you. 